This week, we have a band that's been a mainstay in the deathcore scene for quite some time now. They've had some pretty interesting touring partners, from Suicide Silence to Rivers of Nile, and even a wacky tour with Trivium that had, of all bands, Tesseract on it. Yeah, that would be a jarring shift to go from this band's deathcore to Tesseract's pretty progressive post metal mix. Anyway, we're here to talk about Fit for an Autopsy and their new album. That's today on Metallic Reviews. Hello and welcome to yet another installment of Metallic Reviews, where I give honest ratings to honest music. Today, we're going to be diving down the deathcore hole. Now, there have been some pretty well-received deathcore albums over the past few years. The most prominent of these was probably uh, Whitechapel's The Valley from 2019. But we're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about a band that loves to talk about their political and environmental views in pretty poetic ways. Yeah, it's fit for an autopsy with their new album, Oh, What the Future Holds, released January 14th on Nuclear Blast. So, let's dive in and see how this mainstay deathcore outfit did, shall we? This is yet another in, frankly, a, a long line of deathcore albums that have, you know, kind of really pretty album covers and not so pretty music. Seriously, it's, it's like their, their album covers look like this, and then the music sounds like this. Now, before you jump on me in the comments, that's not a critique. I actually really enjoyed this album. From beginning to end, there's a lot to love here. I really appreciated the riff work, and that classic bludgeoning deathcore sound is, is all over with a, a little bit of ambience thrown in for good measure. Crushing songs like Pandora, Collateral Damage, and A New Level of Hate prove that this band continues to push the genre that their mainstays in. But my favorite parts of this album are the moments when they pull back and they play with dynamic material and allow the music to breathe free. The best track on the record, in my opinion, is Far From Heaven. Now Brad, over on Banger TV, talked about how the band sound a lot like a deathcore version of Gojira in his review, which I will be leaving a link to in the description if you guys want to go check that out. Nowhere is this comparison more prevalent than on the song Far From Heaven. In fact, it sounds suspiciously close to the shooting star off of Gojira's album Magma, which is another favorite song of mine. However, Far From Heaven is not the only spot on the album where the band plays with tonality and these shifting dynamics. Two Towers has a number of areas where the song just moves with the music and it really turns into something beautiful. It's a nice small escape before the band engulfs you in its own self-guided sense of brutality once more. A third appealing thing on the album are the lyrics. Despite the fact that the band and I have a lot of political and environmental disagreements, I appreciate the way that everything's worded. It's very poetic, harking back to my favorite album from last year, which was Architects for Those That Wish to Exist. It makes one stop and consider them on a much deeper level. Now, whether or not one chooses to side with the band is up to each person singularly, but that doesn't mean that the lyrics can't be appreciated, especially after the clunky lyrics off Dysis last week. In short, they're some of the best lyrics I've ever seen within the deathcore realm. There's the positive, not for the negative. This album is a lot like the recent Spider-Man movie for me. It's terrific, but it has a lot of unnecessary padding. The title track opens the album and it doesn't really go anywhere. It's not a normal intro track, but it's not really a legitimate song either. It's just two and a half minutes of this random noodling with some poetry tossed on top. It lacks the meat for a song, yet it's not the keyboard-laden introductory piece that only lasts 30 seconds. It, it just doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Finally, Album Closure, The Man That I Could Be, is nearly seven minutes long, and it doesn't seem like it knows what it wants to be. Kind of ironic, considering the song title. There's clean singing, and then there's non, and then there is, and it, it just repeats and repeats and feels like it's only there to pad the album's runtime. Other than that, this was a fantastic deathcore release. I really enjoyed my journey through it, and I highly recommend it if you hadn't heard it yet. Fit for an Autopsy should be proud of this release, although they might want to work on the runtime for the next one. The album was great, but a tighter version would have been more welcome. In any case, we've got a good one here, folks. It gets a 4.5 out of 5. Thank you so much for watching. Click like, subscribe, and leave a comment to let me know what you thought of this album. Next week, we're shifting gears dramatically from deathcore to the realm of female-fronted power metal. It's Battle Beast and their new album, Circus of Doom. We'll dive into that next time here on Metallic Reviews, where I give honest ratings to honest music.